Hoofs. 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 Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. I'm Benson, and today I'm going to be painting Scaith the Huntsman. This is the leader of Scaith's Wild Hunt, the warband from Beastgrave. New skirmish game by Games Workshop. Me and Ben have been painting this up. He's doing the Beastmen faction, Brashrak. I'm doing the Wild Hunt, and this is the one we're starting with. So the first thing that I did notice, there's some quite bad join marks. We used the push fit on this model. I think it needs gluing. If I had more time, I think I would probably use green stuff and do a really neat join. However, Ben's cracking the whip. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to rush it, but I think I'll go away. I will take this apart, I'll glue it, and then I'll come back to you. And I think that will make it look a lot better when it's painted up. Okay, and I am back. It's all been glued up. As you can see, the joint's looking a lot better. It's, it's not perfect in an ideal world. I would prefer to use a bit of green stuff, make it that bit tidier, but you know, on a deadline on a deadline so we'll uh, we'll make do with the glue also as you guys can see i've now got this on a holder it's quite a spiky delicate model so i don't want to be manhandling it too much so this is game envy's large hobby holder pop that on just to make it a bit easier while i'm painting to not interact with the model too much now the first paint i'm going to be using is fur brown by army painter now because ben is using mainly citadel contrast paints for his uh, his warband he's doing. I thought for this one I'd use Army Painter because after all, I know a lot of you guys that have followed us in the past, you you know, you're going to have a lot of Army Painter paints to use. So for this model, I'm going to try and use entirely Army Paints in there. I've got some fur brown. I put it on my palette already. A little dash of water just to hint out a little bit. And this is going to go all over his also the horse part of his body. So I'm just going to apply this on like this, working it into the gaps, covering it. Want nice even coverage. Paint's dried up a bit under the light already. <laughs> nice even coverage. And I'll cover this whole area, all of the horse part of him, and I'll get right back to you as soon as this is done. Right then, guys and girls, we have painted all of Horsey Boy's, well, horsey parts. Now, as you can see, I have had to take the shields off. I was really struggling to get into get some of the detail like this was completely obscured, and some of his back here. I've tried to keep it neat and tidy, but it is only a base coat, it is only the first layer, so we're not too worried, you know, try and get it done as quickly as possible so we can get onto the, some of the detail work. With that in mind, the next thing I'm going to be doing is using Army Paint. Painter's prison jumpsuit. It's an orange colour and I'm going to be doing this on his hair. I've put some on my palette, watered it down a little and just apply it over his hair. Now this is a really bright orange. The reason I'm doing this is I will be putting a wash on it later to bring out the detail in the hair because obviously there's a number of sort of hair strands there. So to bring out the detail I'll be using a wash. So starting off with a bright colour is sort of okay. I wouldn't do this if I was just going to highlight it up because let's be honest it's pretty bright. There's not a long way to go. Now there is some hair coming out of his legs and down by his feet as well. Now we we will orange that up a little bit, but I'm going to highlight that up normally like the rest of the horse's torso first and then sort of tint it orange at the end. I don't want it to be full on orange like his hair is, but we'll deal with that later. For now, we're just doing all his head, ponytail here, and then of course the other side. Okay, and with the hair done, really nice, bright, vibrant orange there. Looks great. So I think now the torso is fully dry, so I'm going to start with some dead black now. Another army paint to paint. I'm going to try and use entirely army paint, and we're going to be putting that on the sort of belt harness thing around around his body. There's a strap across here. We're going to be doing the horns, the antlers, and oh, and of course the wrist guards. Now this one, not so worried about. It's going to be under a under a shield, but the other one we're going to have to do very carefully. So with this black, I've actually watered it down quite a lot. Now I often do this with black. I'd rather do two sort of thin coats of black rather than one very thick one because. Well, black's such a dominating colour, isn't it? It's so, it's so strong. I find a couple of thin coats just gives you a bit more control over it than one big gloopy coat. So I should be doing that, and hopefully that'll look quite nice. A lot of this felt on his back is actually under the under the shields as well. You can't really see it, but I think do it all to the best of my ability. Yeah. We'll worry about what we can see at the end. Now I'm using Redgrass Games. Moved on to their double zero brush now. I was using their number two, but I'm at Ben's house. I forgot to bring my brushes, and Ben's are a lot older than mine, so the tips aren't quite as sharp. So whereas I might have still been doing this with the number two if I'd remembered to bring mine. I foolishly did not so unfortunately we've had to downgrade a bit so it'll take a bit longer but that's okay we'll get a lovely finish from it nonetheless the black is all done now we've done the harness arms straps across the chest and the antlers in there now you may notice the hobby holder is gone this is because i realized when i was painting earlier that my hand was drifting off screen and i don't know how much you could see when i'm painting not on camera i am still using the hobby holder it does make it a lot easier than trying to sort of very delicately hold on but i want you guys to be able to see what i'm actually doing <laughs> so it is gone while i'm painting on camera 
camera the things I do to keep you happy. Next up, I've decided I'm going to do the flesh to his body and his arms. He's wearing a mask on his face, so I don't need to do that. But he's got his body and his hands out there. And for this, I'm using Survivor Skin and Matte White. It's a mix, so I'm going for about, not 50-50, maybe 40% Survivor Skin to 60 Matte White. And with those two together, I'll trim down a tiny little bit, and that'll create some sort of really pale elf flesh. Now, I'm not too au fait with Army Painter paints. I don't know, there might be a pale sort of elfy flesh colour, but if there is, Ben hasn't got it. So, um, basically, I'm using using my mix to get his flesh done. So, as you can see, it's quite a quite pale colour. If you look at the Survivor skin here, it's it's a lot darker. So, I've gone for this lighter colour. I imagine running around in the trees and such like, he doesn't see a lot of sun. He's not got a great tan. He's got some very strangely shaped abs as well. So, we'll just paint this all in. Uh, also, full disclosure while I'm thinking of. So, while I was painting the black in, I was very careful around all the brown, but around the skin areas that I'd not painted yet, I paid very little attention and was quite sloppy, quite messy with it. Then I realised I was painting a very pale elf flesh colour on top of his, well, the black that had splurged everywhere. So I have actually gone back over it just with a, well, with the matte white actually that I'm using here to tidy up the, the mess I made basically. So my advice to you would be pay a bit of attention, be careful because yeah, it, it's it would have been a lot quicker to do it more carefully in the first place than it was to go back and tidy everything up so that's something for you to bear in mind so it turns out while i was painting in the flesh color i realized that little dot in his stomach the abs they're not abs it's a sort of green gemstone it doesn't appear to be attached to anything so i'm not entirely sure how it's affixed to him but it does look like he's got this green gemstone here so i painted that back in white ready to we've got some gemstone paint citadel not army painter so you know i may have to renege on my pure army painter stuff but we've got some gemstone mix i can use and painted this one on the side of his strap in white as well do that one red that's red in the artwork that we've got so we'll do that next however i am using filthy suit again army painter this time Time. This is going to be for his hoofs, 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 for his bottom of his feet and for the blade stone thing poking out of the back of his tail. I feel like that's probably not grown there. I think it's maybe been attached somehow. So I'm, I think we can pretend it's stone. I think it might be stone. So we'll paint those in grey. Nothing too technical about this. Just applying the paint. We'll uh, use a wash later on to darken that down a little bit and then highlight it up again from there to give it give it some features because it's a bit smooth, a bit plain at the moment. And back on the size two just while we're not doing anything too painted, too detailed. And then as I said, we'll get these hoops done as well. Really quick, this is not, not particularly detailed work. The model's quite nicely cast, or whatever you call it. It's got its raised bits stand up quite nicely, so you can use them to guide your brush around without fear of smearing it all over it. And this is his two back feet done, and then whoop, try not to drop it. It's a lot easier holding on with, with the hobby holder, but it's also a lot harder to keep it on camera. And I feel, you know, making a video is probably fairly important. It stays on camera, I would have thought. Reminds me of some of my earlier videos when Ben first got me painting and I was straying off camera all the time. My hands were all over the place. I try a bit harder these days, you know. Got to make the effort sometimes, haven't you? And here we go. Hoofs, hooves, all painted in. I haven't decided what to do with the base yet. It's got quite a lot of uh, nice detail on it, actually. It's got some little flower things here. Petals and middle bit stamen, is it? And this raised up bit. I'm not sure if that's warp stone. I think I said in the unboxing, not the unboxing, the construction, the building video. Not sure if that's warpstone or green foliage, but either way I suppose you're painting it roughly the same, but we'll come back to that later I think. For now we've got the hoofs all painted in, and up next I think we'll probably do some do some metallics. So let me go and see what colour paints we want to use for those. So thinking done, I've gone away, I've gone home, I've had a sleep, I've come back again, and I have decided that today I shall be using the Braid Gold by Dark Star Molten Metals for the spear haft shaft the handle of the spear we've got some old silver for the blade and interesting victorian gold a sort of well greeny gold and this is going to be for the uh, face plate the icon on the front all around the edges of the shielded shielded parts and of course around the edges of the shields themselves speaking of which how is this the incidental detail they've actually got stitching around where his i guess the straps would be to hold it i'm uh, i'm quite impressed with that i'm not sure i'm going to paint it but you know i'm impressed with it you'll never see it but it's a nice detail to have so just grab a brush and let's get started with some gold it's only a base coat so we just slather it on here doing it quite thick 
making sure to get decent coverage so there's no white bits poking through. He'll be a little bit careful by his hand, which we've already painted the flesh on. Oh, the sun's so hot on the back of my neck. I'm not used to this painting in daylight. Normally, uh, by the time I get around to Ben's office, it's dark, so not really such an issue. But pretty warm today, which is nice, because as far as summers go, this one's been fairly mediocre. Had some really, really, really hot days, like a week's worth, and then the rest of the summer's just been rainy and miserable. At least it's making an effort for me today, so that's nice while I'm sat inside painting. <laughs> so there you go, that's the gold going on quite nicely here. And we'll just do down to the front. I really like these Dark Star Molten Metals. I think their coverage is pretty, pretty good. I mean, obviously Army Painter Citadel, they all do their own versions of metallics, and I think the sort of quality of them can vary quite significantly, but I've, since Ben has introduced me to these Molten Metals, I do enjoy using these. Careful around his hand here, and do the underside as well. And there we go, that'll do for now. I can always uh, do a bit of a tidy up off cam if I notice when it's dry, there's a few bits I've missed out. So that's the gold all done. It's really just the, the uh, handle of the spear that's that gold. So next up it's old silver, and that's just for the blade of the spear. And again, we'll just put this on fairly thickish layer, do it quite quick, and can always tidy up later. It's a good thing about the base coats, there's always a bit of wiggle room for tidying after. And my hands are quite shaky this morning, though. I've had my wheat of it's just not ready to face the world yet. But there we go, that's the silver done. And last is the very interesting greeny petal. I'm hoping this goes on as nicely as I think it could. It looks a really nice colour on the palette, so hopefully it'll be quite quite nice on here. So we'll we'll trick this on the other like on at the front, probably the uh, biggest part for to get a feel for the colour. Oh yeah, that's quite a nice uh, colour. I suppose it's sort of tarnished, tarnished metal really, but I think it suits the sort of forest elf wood elf aesthetic quite nicely with it being green tinted. So I'll finish off all this green. As I say, it's quite a few little bits and pieces on the shields and um, around the face, this emblem on his stomach, around the edge of his shoulder pads and stuff, and obviously the same on the knee pads. So I'll come back once that's all done and we can see how I get on. And we are back. I have painted in all the gold on here. Here. Also remember to use the braid gold to do the little hair decorations, the little bobbles, bangles in his hair. Use the Victorian gold to do the tie at the end of his plait. And as you can see, I popped these shields back on. I've not done the hand shield back on because I think I'm going to paint the inside of this. I, I like the fact the details there, so I'm going to paint it just to give it a go. I've sent Ben off to uh, make me a drink of tea, hopefully cure my shaky, shaky hands. So the next part we're going to do is this sort of padded layer. Now, I ummed and ahed for a while about which sort of brown to use for this. In the artwork, it basically it looks sort of a, I don't know, a reddy brown, but then the more I looked at it, the more I thought, actually, I think it might just be a reddy colour with maybe a dark wash over it. So I have gone for, I'm going to opt for Crusted Saw, which is, as I say, sort of a dark red. And I think when that's had a bit of a, a darker wash on top of it, it should look okay. And this is hopefully the last bit of base coating we've got to do. So we're putting this on nice and thin. It looks like it might need a couple of coats, possibly watered it down a bit too much. <laughs> it's not a colour Ben uses very often, so I've just had to shake the bottle for about 10 minutes as well to try and, uh, try and get it all mixed in. Trying not to get any on the uh, Victorian gold I've just done. Whether it'll match the uh, the work, the artwork that we've got is fairly debatable, but I think it's going to look like quite a nice colour. It's sort of a braided patchwork sort of effect they've gone for. Woven, that's the word I'm looking for, woven. So I don't know if it's supposed to be material or wood or, or what it is, but I think, yeah, I think this is going to look pretty good with a darker wash that I'll do here. Do on his knees, do his shoulder pad, and then, apart from the base, which I'm going to do at the end, that's all done. Oh, the other thing I noticed when I was doing the gold is I'd not done the grey uh, filthy suit, I think it was, I used. So I've just tidied up these bits as well and put the grey in there where, where it should have been before, but somehow I managed to miss it. Popped on the shields, painted in the padding. It's looking pretty good now, it's all base coated. Ben has brought me my fortifying drink of tea. Brought it in a Watch It Paint It mug as well. If you want a beautiful mug like this, you can find one in the link below. Support the channel and, of course, have a beautiful mug like that. So what we're doing next, we're taking flesh wash and, shockingly, we're going to apply this to the flesh. Now, I'm not going to be washing the torso. I think that'll be better done just highlighted up. The actual torso, though, we need some highlight on and some low light. So what we'll be doing here is just applying this and just letting it run into the gap. We don't want this pooling too much. He's, he's quite a pale character. Again, doesn't see much of the sun. We certainly don't want this to stain too much, but just a little bit, just to bring out some of the detail, add a little bit of definition there. I think what I would say, guys, is do take your time putting these models together and make sure you green stuff any of the joints and stuff. It does just, it just, just adds to the finished model at the end of the day. You, you can do as good a paint job as you like, but when it's got lots of cracks that aren't supposed to be there, it's never going to look as good as you want it to. But let's get this washing up the fingers here. Over his thumb. There we go. I think that's cool. All the areas we need to catch with this wash. So the next wash I'm going to use, it's quite similar, to be honest. Slightly more ready tone, maybe. And that's Army Painter's light tone. For the flesh, it was flesh wash, and it's light tone now. Just give that a good shake. Squeeze a bit out on my palette. Because this is a wash, I don't water it down or anything. 
everything and just uh, just apply this neat. And I'm going to use this to go over all the metallics. Now everything seems to have some, a slightly browny tone in the artwork. So I'll put this on quite a fit and just hopefully bring some definition and, well, as I say, a bit of a browny, goldeny tone to everything. Oh, I should mention, actually, um, I'm using the number two brush again by Red Crash Games. It slurps up a lot of the wash. And while I'm doing these bits that, let's be honest, I don't need to be too careful, I'm making sure it doesn't pull, but because it's such a light, uh, light color, it's not going not gonna to affect. And so on to the next stage of the shading. This time we're using Jump Shoot Shader, which is a sort of purpley ready wash, ready shade. Um, I've mixed this with quite a lot of water because we're going to be applying it to his hair. And I do want to bring out the detail. You can see there's plait here and the individual hair strands here. We do want to bring out that detail, but I don't want to darken it down too much. I'm loving this vibrant orange, so I don't want to bring it down too much. So I've watered this down, hopefully enough. Find out in one second. And we're just applying this. Yeah, that's pretty good to me. Just accentuating that detail a little bit there. Move the paint around, working it into all the uh, crevices, all the cracks. We will, of course, highlight this bit back up to being very, very bright again. I think that looks great. Really bringing out the detail there. The next shade we're going to use is a deep shader. Again, army paint. And this is just going to be going on to the shields just here. Bring out the detail there. As you can see with his arm shield, I've used the light tone to bring out the stitching. Didn't, didn't bother painting that in, I think. Use the highlight on top of the white paint from before. And that just brings out the detail in the stitching so we can put that on his hand and nobody will ever see it. Ben was slightly confused about me painting it, but you know, completionist in me. I, now I knew it was there, I had to paint it, couldn't just leave it. So let's try this on here. Yeah, I think that's dark enough to bring out the detail quite nicely there. As you can see, this brush holds a lot of paint, so I'll try and spread this around all the areas that need the paint on there. Try not to get this on the metalwork at the same time. We don't want to spoil the... Uh, golden colour. I think we can probably afford to get some on this silver um, emblem on the shield here. Could do with bringing out the detail actually, so we can highlight that back up to the bright, bright silver colour again. We'll leave this to dry now and then I'll pop that back on and we can see what we're going to start highlighting. Okay, so as we can see, the uh, the shades all dried on there. So now I'm going to be using just the base coat again, and we're just bringing the colour up again to that to the sort of brighter metallic. Carry on where we left off, doing the shields, and obviously leaving the shade in all the recesses. But just bringing out the shine on here, and we'll work our way around all of the uh, all of the metallic parts. Okay, so that brought the shields back up to roughly where they were before, but leaving the shade in the gap. Also, as you can see, on his face and his little emblem here, some other little bits and pieces. Same process all the way through, just putting it on the raised bits that want to be a bit brighter and leaving the shade in the recesses. Now, the next colour I'm going to use is back onto the old silver, and we're actually going to use that to highlight a little bit on the Victorian gold. Now, because it's quite a different colour, all we're really doing is picking out the very sharp edges that would catch the sunlight. It's almost like the dazzle from the uh, from the corners. And while we're doing that, we'll also highlight this um, spear tip yeah the point of the spear the pointy end uh, will give that a highlight as well and bring that up to something vaguely resembling silver again as it's quite browny at the moment oh uh, let's do that on the very tip making it look super sharp like it's caught the sun a lot of these uh, areas where we're just doing on the very edge you can literally just use the side of your brush small amount of paint on your brush just use the side and it just catches the very edge we don't particularly want it to be a completely different color it's more just to give the impression of brightness on there so we don't necessarily uh, need too much paint on there and see on that corner piece it's just just a little glint that's all we really need and then with that done we'll just move on to this spear tip just a bit of an edge here never really been the master of metallics Ben's, uh, Ben's a lot better at using these than I am so uh, if you want to see some really good metallics check out any number of Ben's videos he's uh, to be fair he's painted a few models <laughs> using almost solely metallic guys in armor and uh, such like but we do our best we can't have him hogging all the glory and on the underside of course the light wouldn't be catching the underside as much so really just doing the edges on this part I think we're imagining the skate here running through the trees with the sun sort of breaking through the canopy so it's a bit of a tinted light being cast but that's okay i forgot to do one of his legs on the tips mistakes have been made so next up is some of the braid gold let's apply this on here on the end of each of these little notes I'm not aiming to do too much with this it is literally just a case of um, making the uh, raised areas pop that little bit more and of course the pointy bits got to have nice shiny pointy bits and then next i'm just going to mix a tiny little bit of the gold with the silver i've got them both on my palette so it's just a bit of a 50 50 and we'll just pop that on the very tip of the end of the rear. and again it's just the sunlight glinting off of a very shiny sharp edge. Wasn't sure if you could mix metallics until I just tried, but it seems like it's worked okay. Still gold, but with a silvery twang makes it a bit brighter. Not sure if you can see it on camera, but it looks quite nice in real life. Oh, I know what I forgot. I forgot to do the silver on the shield. Maybe that's a bit brighter. Stands out a bit more. Now, continuing the theme with the shield, what I'm doing now is just painting some crusted saw, which was the base colour I used. I'm just putting this back into the centre of each of the little rectangles, leaving, obviously, all the shade in, in all the recesses, leaving a little bit of the dark around the edge. 
page. And then once this has been done on all of the panels, then I'm going to do a very careful line highlight with a lighter red just on the inside. It looks to me what they've done in their display model. I think it looks quite good. It gives the impression that this could be sort of woven leather or something. I'm going to try and emulate that. Not sure how well it'll turn out with uh, my shaky shaky hands, but there's nothing complicated about it. It's just very delicate work, that's all. But anyway, I'm going to continue to do this on all of the other padded areas and then I'll come straight back to you and we'll get on with some line, line highlighting. And with all the uh, sort of padding done, it's time to start this highlight. Now, for this, I'm using Abomination Gore, again, Army Painter. And I've mixed that in with a tiny bit of white. It's probably about, mm, I don't know, 75, 25, something like that. More red than white. And that's just to brighten it up a little bit. I'm not sure there's probably a paint that does what I need without mixing it. But I'm at Ben's, I'm using his selection. And he's not here right now, so I can't, um, can't find anything lighter. So this is what I'm going with. As you can see, we're just painting around the edge of each of these little squares. Now, I'll... Uh, I'll leave you while I do this because it's not particularly interesting to watch and it's going to take a while. This is so many tiny little bits. But I'll get these all done and then come back to you with the finished finished shield. I suppose armor is armor playing as much as shields, but whatever. We'll come back to you with the finish defensive equipment. <laughs> Okay, and with that super time consuming bit done, as you can see here, I think you can see on camera, maybe, um, time to highlight up the skin. So again, with this, it's just back up to the uh, base colour, the wash has darkened it down nicely, and uh, we just bring up the raised parts with this highlight. And it's the same mix as before, with the skin, skin tone and the white, about 50-50 ratio, maybe a touch more white. I'm just paint around this strange gem in his abs, quite a big join in this actually. So as I've been painting these highlights on, I've noticed under his arm, just here, you can see, it's actually quite a prominent join join where the the arms actually affixed to the model itself um push the push fit it sort of shows now had i not already painted it when i noticed this and had a bit more time what i would have done is used a bit of green stuff uh, which is sort of a modeling putty modeling clay i guess and you can use that to repair little things like that i mean if you're good with it you can make whole limbs out of it but for an, a little repair like that it's, it's not too hard to use and i believe there's another video on the channel which uh, i'm sure ben will put a link to so certainly consider that if uh, if you notice any joints like that and that's the skin all highlighted up so we could probably take this a layer higher not gonna lie but i just don't feel the need i think it's a small enough part of the model it's not what draws the eye and i think it's it's highlighted enough for this stage if you want to go for you know winning awards or such like you could probably probably do another layer or two just increasing the lightness really get a bit more pop to it but i quite like where it, where it's at right now it's not it's not detracting attention from the rest of the model so now we're back to filthy suit and yep more edge highlighting so we're going around all the leather work with this and just catching the edge of all the black areas and making them gray so all the edge highlighting on all the leather's been completed while i was doing that i also did a quick dry brush on the uh, tops of the antlers on the edges here and just filled in these i presume stone that he's Go poking through his tail and just his hooves just up to the base layer and then with a tiny dab of white literally just a little spot in the in the gray uh, just on the very edge to make it look sort of sharp and sharp and stone and again around the edge of his hooves same same sort of thing so that's that all done now the next thing we're going to do is use some citadel technical paints and we've got a waystone green and a spirit stone red here and basically i've never used these but they're supposed to be sort of gems in a pot i'm hoping one quick dab on here of red and on this stomach thing in green and we'll have two in to gems we'll give that a go now give it a quick shake where's my brush there's my brush we'll do the green one first a bit more a bit more awkward we'll start at the bottom and just brush it upwards right awkward to get this the angle maybe a bit thin i think i need a bit more than that do it a bit thicker a bit of trial and error never used the uh, technical paints before a bit of a blob on there that better mm. hopefully that'll dry nice and shiny like a gem and then same again with the red give it a shake Open her up. Oh, this looks quite viscous. Make sure we're covering all that white. Oh, that looks nice. That looks like a gem. I wonder how these worked on a black undercoat rather than a white. Oh, I think that, that red gem looks really good there. We'll see how the green one dries. Maybe it needs another layer, but we'll consider that later when it dried up. Yeah, I like the looks of those. Put the lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to move on. We're going to do a quick yellow dry brush just on the tips of the hair. We've we put a wash on there. We've uh, got the shade in the recesses. Hair looks pretty, pretty decent anyway, but I think a bit of yellow highlight on it just to make make it look that bit more realistic and uh, that'll be the hair all done it's it's quite easy just a quick dry brush so we'll get on with that using babe blonde army painters zombie side so i'll get some of that on the palette and find a dry brush all right so i've dug out one of ben's old brushes to use as a dry brush put a little bit of demonic yellow on it and then rubbed a lot of that off on the tissue so there's just just a hint of the color left now in the artwork i noticed that the yellow is actually quite close to the base um, of the head around the bottom here that's not supernatural and to be honest, I feel like it should be on the tips. I know certainly in summertime, 
it's the tips of my hair that go light a lighter color so that's what i'm gonna do with this i mean i'm not one of the fae i'll be honest but yeah i do feel like it will create a nicer more realistic sorry i should say more realistic look <laughs> for the half horse half elf as you can see we're just using steady strokes not too much paint on the brush and just catching the tips of the hair so with this fiery hair complete it's been pretty good there if i say so myself we're moving on to the horse now i am denied about how to paint this it's quite a lot of flat surface so i don't think any sort of wash would be very good what i decided to do instead was do a couple of sort of gradual highlights to um, bring out the detail so the first thing i'm doing is taking fur brown and demonic yellow and i'm mixing it maybe 70 30 with more fur brown and then we water that down a bit and then what i'm going to do now is just pick out most of the large muscle groups that you can see it's quite quite defined we'll pick out these bits and all the areas that the sun would hit as it breaks through the trees all the bits that it make it a little bit lighter i'll get this all done and i'll be right back to you so there we have that first level of uh, sort of highlight done now this is quite a time consuming process but i mean this is skate this is the leader of your warband you want him to look his best next up what we're going to do is basically i'm just going to keep adding another little bit of that demonic yellow and building these highlights up covering slightly less ground each time so you get a bit of a blend a bit of a fade and uh, as i say just bringing a little bit more yellow in each time really bring the color up now we're not focusing too much on these tassely bit behind his uh, back legs and on the end of his tail we're going to be giving those a bit of a orange dry brush later to tie them into his hair so we're not worrying about those but everywhere else all the raised areas all the bits that catch the sun and all the bits that just sort of stood out a bit more defined we'll build up the highlights on those and we'll come back to you when it's all done then we'll put the orange on and see what we think and here we have it the finished horse so as you can see it's got some highlights on there bit of a blend it, look, it looks quite quite decent i'm quite pleased with how it's turned out so the next thing we're going to do is take some of the uh, jumpsuit orange we used before and i've got got back out the old dry brush again and same process as we used on the hair bit of orange we just rub it across the bits that we want to orange up a bit which is all on the back of the uh, back of the legs here tip to the tail here probably have to do this a bit thicker than we did the uh, yellow the brown's a bit of a stronger colour to do it on top of. But a bit, of a bit of a tint of orange on here just to tie it in with the hair nicely. And then once we've done that, we'll do a little bit of the yellow again, just like on the hair, really. Not to forget to do around the uh, feet as well. I think we can do the whole of the of his legs a little bit orangey here. See if we're in about being overly tidy and also ties it in quite nicely. And then the same on his front legs here. If we bring this uh, highlight a little way down the tail as well, it'll make it look like it's blended a little bit, sort of fading into the normal fur colour, that fur brown. We'll just bring it away from the tip just a little bit, all around the foot here. And then we come in with the demonic yellow again, doing the same thing we did with the orange, same thing we did with the hair to be fair, but just a little bit more carefully. Don't want, to, don't want too much, it, it really is just a hint with this yellow, just a hint all the way around. I have to tidy up that bit of uh, stone after again, couldn't really avoid it catching that. And here you can see back of the legs tail back of the things here all finished now so they've got that orangey tint bit of yellow highlight just uh just ties in nicely with his hair and i think it adds something it's it's a nice little thing to add had to tidy up the hoofs and the uh, spiky stone tail a bit a little bit because well i'm messy with hindsight probably should have done that before i painted them anyway same with the base actually i think this hoof is going to get messy when i do the base but we'll worry about that later in fact there's only one other thing i need to do before i do the base and that is as spotted by ben his little eyes now in the i want to say artwork it's not artwork in the pre-painted thing in the booklet that came with the Beast Grape set. Um, his eyes sort of, they seem to be a glowing green. So to that end, I'm going to get some white and I'm just going to paint in a little bit of the white. It's a crushed, crushed skull, actually. So paint in a little bit of crushed skull here, off white. I'm trying to fill the whole gap. And then once I've done that, I'm going to use a green wash. So hopefully it'll go nice and dark around the edges where it sort of pulls and just stain the center of the eye. And that, I think, should create quite a nice, um, What's it called? Glowing effect. Funny, I talk all day, every day. But as soon as the camera's rolling, I just forget words. I always used to laugh at Ben for uh, forgetting his words when he was recording, and now I'm doing the same thing. That's that done. So I'll find a green wash. Not sure what'll be best. Let me come back here. Nothing like being prepared, is there? And that was nothing like being prepared. So in the depths of Ben's vast paint collection, I've managed to find this plague shader, which I hope will be just the green I need. So nothing clever about this, just blob it in, eye hold, and the same on the other side. Now, the one precaution we're taking is we don't want it to pull in the middle, we want it to pull towards the edges. We just draw it away from the center. 
and I think probably going to need a couple of coats but that should do exactly what we want it to do so I'll have to let that dry and as I say I'll let you know if I do another coat but it's looking not too bad at the moment and then we'll get started on the base and so with these green can you see this on camera maybe with these green green eyes done it's time to move on to the base now I'm trying something a bit different I've not really done this before with the base but looking at the pictures uh, as mentioned before I could show you guys actually let's get down on screen here so this is scathe but looking at the bases it looks to me like what they've done, you can probably see better on that thing. It looks like they've done a brown base coat, certainly here, and then sort of dry brushed green brought the colour to green from a brown uh, base coat. So that's what I'm going to give a go. So put that out of the way. So to that end, I'm going for a leather brown by Army Painter. I'm going to paint that all over the top of the base here. Now, as any regular watchers will know, I don't often do bases. This is normally Ben's forte, but in this instance, I'm going to step up and give it a go because, you know, it's not often I get to play with a nice textured base with patterns and such on it. So, get this done. Now, I am trying to miss these little petal flowers. I don't want those dark. I'm going to paint those up bright. Everything else, though, I think is just going to end up being the green highlighted bits. And there's a little circle here, I think. That's going to be a pool, a pond of some sort. So I'm not quite sure what I'll do with that. Yeah, it'd be interesting trying to paint water in. But we'll, uh, we'll find a nice blue and give it a go. Or I should say while I'm um, just doing this big base coat on the base. <laughs> um, I've upgraded to the size 2 uh, Red Cross Games brush. The uh, don't really need the little detail one at this stage. And um, yeah, it's just rough and ready uh, getting this colour down. Bigger brush makes it a little bit quicker. I'm a genius and definitely doesn't pay me enough. Um, or at all for that matter. <laughs> it's push fit, isn't it? So I can push him off. And that way we're not risking getting uh, any paint on our already painted model. So that is ideal. Made life a lot easier. Still haven't decided if this uh, raised up bit here is warp stone or if it's just some more flora and fauna. But, well, flora I guess. <laughs> But um, they're both green, so we'll paint it green. It can be whatever, uh, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> okay, so we're back after the leather brown base coat. We've used Deep Shader to just darken it down a touch, basically. Make it look a bit more muddy. Next up, we've got Orc Skin, which is a green. And we're going, as Orcs are, and we are going to dry brush this on. If I don't throw my brush all over the room. And this is going to be a real heavy dry brush. We just want a tiny little bit of the um, brown poking through after it's done. So there's going to be quite a lot of this going on using this bigger dry brush than earlier. Turns out mud doesn't have that much edges. <laughs> Not sure this constitutes as a dry brush. <laughs> Basically just painting on top again. So using that oak skin we've done the big heavy dry brush. I mean I'm not sure you can even call it dry brushing. It's almost uh, just painting on the base layer on. Uh, what I did after that was I used Scaly Hide, another army painter colour, and just did a lighter touch here and there. A little bit on the edges, on the sides of these circly bits. The texture in the base anyway. And then I re-picked out the wood for this I suppose it's fallen branch fallen tree branch and applied a deep shader wash to the whole thing um again to bring the color down it was all a bit bright and poppy at first and i don't want the base to be taking all the attention away so we've done that while i had the scale hide open i also painted this little bit on the actual model itself and i'm going to use the same color to just do the whatever this is <laughs> this uh, bit of warp stone or wrath or as i say whatever now because washes take so long to dry i'm going to queue up a few of them. So the next bit I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some purple, specifically some pale flesh by uh, Army Painter. I'm going to paint that on these petals. I'm not 100% sure what they are, but yeah, pale flesh I'm going to use on here. And then I'm going to use a dark green. I haven't decided which one, <laughs> but a dark green on the vines along here just to make them stand out a little bit. And then once that's all done i'll then be able to apply some washes because basically i've been i've had to just sit waiting doing nothing waiting for the wash to dry you can actually see a bit of it here still not dry uh, so i could continue on with it so i want to do all the washes at the same time but so when i've painted those bits i'll i'll come back to you but i'll be putting the jumpsuit shader on here to purple it up and darken it down and uh, we'll use the horde shader the green wash on uh, on this and on the one on his leg as well so i'll come back to you and i'm back having painted in all those flowers i remembered the name of the uh, green I wanted to use it was angel green which is a hundred percent match to the color primer if should you ever chase it but yeah i think this will then um, this will stand out different enough from the sort of muddier color of the of the other green and we're just going to be painting this on along here the vines wrapping around the uh, the trunk of this well the branch that seems to have fallen very much 
And with that bit done, it's time to apply those washes. So as, as uh, I said before, it'll be hoard shader on this little green bit here and on the green bit on the, uh, on the skate himself. And then I'm going to use the jumpsuit shader just on these flowers. And that should hopefully uh, bring out bring out the detail and add a bit of uh, bit of interest to it. So we'll take a bit of this hoard shader and we just plop it on. Now, from fairly thick, we want it to darken it down a bit from that very pastel colour. What we do want, though, is for it to be a lot thicker towards the base, a lot darker there. Ooh around the little loop, really blob that on. And then the very same on the actual base itself. When I'm putting this shader on, I'm actually putting on very thick, a big dollop of it. But then I'm using the brush to suck it out a little bit. The dry brush sort of picks the paint back up again if you just sort of poke it in. Or not the dry brush, the only slightly wet brush. <laughs> um, yeah, it sucks it out again because what we want is we want it to be very dark in, in the recesses there, but we don't want to pull too much. We don't want it to extend over its boundaries that we're setting for it. That's why we just go back around and just tidy, little tidy. Now, while those washes are drying, which they usually take some time to do, I'm gonna use a little bit of gray and just go over this here. And um, I initially thought this was a pile of, just like a little raised part of the mud, but on a closer inspection, it turns out it's actually a stone that he's sort of standing on a stone. So I want that to be darker than the hoof. So I can't use the, I think it was filthy suit I used on his hoof. Can't use that because I want it to be darker. I want it to stand out as different. So what I'm going to use this time is Necromancer Cloak, which is much darker grey colour and we'll still highlight it up. We'll probably uh, give it a quick dry brush with um, the filthy suit, but the base for the base colour itself, we certainly want uh, want it to be darker so it stands out as noticeably different from the hoof that's standing right on it. And here we have it. Those washes have more or less dried, I suppose. So what I'm going to do now is not doing too much highlighting. It is only the base after all. But I'm just going to take the original colour of the um, pale flesh. I'm just going to run it along the edges here. Now we tried to do this with the highlight, uh, with the sorry, with the shade a little bit, bring it more central. But we just want those very edges just to pop. Just the very raised edges, very, um, what's the word, very subtle effect. We don't want anything too extreme. We don't want the base to draw attention away from the model, but just a little bit of pop will just make these things look that little bit nicer. That's the uh, flower petals done. I think they look quite nice, quite nice and poppy. And I'm just going to do something very similar with the green, just taking the very tips, just the tip, making it some bright, and just running it. The edge here. It's almost just hedge, edge highlighting really. Hedge highlighting? Edge highlighting. So all that's left really for me to do now is just the matte black around the edge of the base, which I shall do in a moment. And then it's up to Mr. Ben, who is going to use some epoxy resin and do something clever. So this little puddle here is going to make it look like an actual pond or an actual puddle. I'll leave the technical stuff to him. Yeah, I'll get the base, edge of the base all blacked up and then it'll be uh, good to go. This is an absolutely beautiful piece piece of work Benson's done on the base here but I've just reset this puddle back to to white so the blue is going to take really well and this is ridiculously watered down this is more water than paint and this is hydro turquoise so we're going to be I'm just going to be splashing this in here to give the base color to this puddle probably should take the miniature off to to do that that's giving me a lot better access to the puddle so good when you've not glued it all together yet so I'm just going to splat this in here, covering this whole puddle as best I can. But yeah, super water. You can see it all moving around because that's exactly how I want it. I just want a nice fluid water base, something like that, just covering up all the white, although it doesn't massively matter if it's all covered or not. And then I'm going to use some Void Shield Blue. Just going to get some of that on the brush. Again, super watered down. And then I'm just going to be, just going to dip some in and it's going to, sort of swirl and mix a little bit and just making this an ununiform shade of blue now i don't want to mix it i'm not trying to make just a light blue i'm just trying to dot dot and dash some in so it sort of swirls and starts mixing together then i'm going to sit that flat and leave that to dry left that for quite a while to dry make sure it's completely dry it actually looks quite good just like that a really poppy blue vibrant fairy tale-esque sort of pool of water i think that looks really good but i'm going to try and improve it even more using some bond together two-part epoxy resin now this is just poundland in the uk dollar store i guess in in the states maybe other countries have different different ones but yeah it costs a quid and that's it so no no expense spared here and you squeeze out both parts like 
So, I actually only need a little bit. That's probably more than enough. Just pull the plunger back, seal that back up. Looks like a bit more of the right one than the left one, but meh, it doesn't actually need to glue anything together. Then you're going to take some sort of spreader. Just got this little one available. Mix both of those parts together thoroughly. And that's going to create super strong glue, really, and we don't need any of the glue. But in theory, it should dry pretty clear, if not completely clear. And that'll just give an impression of some actual liquid sitting on top of this blue surface below and just build it up a bit 3D, make it look like there's actually some water in that in that puddle. So we'll just dab this in and with the edges being raised, I actually just want to put enough that it kind of just flows and fills the whole area. We'll just carefully apply this. I don't want to get it anywhere except in this pool. So a little bit of time and effort is going to be required here to get it all flat. But it should sort of be self-settling or self, yeah, self, self-leveling, I think is the word I want. I just get the right amount in, which is probably about that much. It's going to start to level out a little bit of liquid tension, I think. Make sure it spreads into the corners. Really don't want to get any on top of the base itself. And I think it's as level as I need it. And it's just a matter of leaving that to dry. Probably a good 24 hours to make sure it's nice and safe. Safe as in won't get fingerprints on it when you touch it, etc. Not that it's dangerous. Now, smooth 24 hours have passed. But hopefully, like me, you think this looks pretty sweet. For the minimal effort, it really does give the impression that there's actually some liquid in there. Now, I could have scored it a little bit with some sort of cocktail stick, even my finger, just to give some ripples, perhaps, but nice and smooth, fairy tale like and I'm really happy with that, so cannot complain. Let me know in the comments below if you'd, you like this water effect and if you'd like to see some more of it. Now, on with the spin, we can see Benson's completely finished product here with my, my added little splash of water on the base, but you can't really see that here, but that's no here nor there. Now, I think this looks absolutely amazing. Benson's done a fantastic job, really impressive. It's quite a large model. It took a long time, a good three hours plus work, but there's all the waiting for washers to dry. So do structure your washers are probably a little bit more elegantly than Benson. Try and get a few of them drying together so you're not just sat waiting, watching paint dry. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below what you thought. Give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Let us know if you'd like to see some more Beast Grave videos. Thank you all ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Yeah. Hoofs, 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 hoofs. It just doesn't stand out unless I make it really extreme, and if I make it really extreme, it looks shit. Get good.